No matter how controversial the man, Elon Musk has single-handedly managed to reshape the world we live in. In just about a decade or two, he redrew the map of personal mobility by making electric cars cool. He put American astronauts into space from American soil once again, and he's now working to dig tunnels underneath our cities to forever cure us of the plague of congestion. And there's one more thing Musk is planning to do, one that will forever cement his place in the history of the human race. Land accrual people on Mars, effectively opening the door to humanity's colonization of the solar system. Notably, while Elon Musk recently promised Starship will attempt orbital launch soon, he also revealed how Starship will land on Mars. Find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX recently launched the Falcon Heavy rocket, creating the most spectacular landing yet. Impressively, Elon Musk shared that moment on Twitter and said, and that's how we'll land on Mars. Indeed, this is the coolest sight in the space world, but Starship landing on Mars is definitely more addictive than this. Now you're probably wondering why Musk said Starship landing on Mars the same with a Falcon 9 booster, right? Normally, Starship SpaceX landings need a belly flop to slow down re-entry. But on Mars, with its relatively very thin atmosphere, won't this maneuver be relatively ineffective? Let's explain. On Earth, a Starship can lose up to 99.9% .9 of its orbital velocity due to re-entry into the atmosphere and its eventual transition into terminal velocity. This means that only a small amount of fuel is required for the flip and landing maneuver. Here on Earth, it means that Starship's only traveling at 90 meters per second when it flips to the landing altitude. On Mars, the Starship will lose only 99% of its orbital speed, which means its terminal velocity will be something like 450 meters per second. And that's five times faster than on Earth. But don't forget, Starships are designed to have a Delta V capability of something like 7,000 meters per second when fully fueled. So 450 meters per second is not a big ask in context. Also, it needs to be pointed out that the landing Starship is mostly empty of fuel, making it much lighter and easier to slow down. And it only has to fight about 38% of the gravity that an Earth landing has to contend with. The Martian atmosphere is still an effective way to shed the bulk of your incoming velocity, as long as you have sufficient thrust to complete the landing process, and Starship has plenty of that. But as NASA's Dr. Firoz Nadiri said, the Mars landing is like climbing Mount Everest. No matter how good you are, you're going to lose your grip sometimes and fall back. So be cautious. Let's check, double check, test and test again, and then have independent eyes check everything again. Humans, even very smart humans, are fallible, particularly when many thousands of parameters are involved. But even if you've done the best engineering possible, you still don't know what Mars has in store for you the day you arrive. Mars can get you, Nadiri says. As a quick note, the danger doesn't end after landing either, because the stay on Mars could kill astronauts. So if you intend to go to Mars one day, be prepared mentally, because as Elon Musk admitted, a bunch of people will probably die in the race to get to Mars. The landing situation is further complicated by other factors affecting the density of Mars' atmosphere. The season, weather, latitude, and even the time of day can change the atmosphere's density. For example, almost 8 million metric tons of carbon dioxide leaves and re-enters Mars' atmosphere seasonally. That's comparable to 23 centimeters of dry ice, that's solid carbon dioxide. Researchers are working on modeling Mars' atmospheric changes so the astronauts can land within a sufficiently dense portion that will provide enough visibility. Planners are considering whether the arriving spacecraft should immediately proceed to the surface, possibly easier from an operational standpoint, or park in orbit before landing. Parking in orbit gives, parking in orbit gives astronauts more flexibility in case a dust storm strikes, similar to when airplanes circle an airport in bad weather. Despite all difficulty, SpaceX plans to beat even NASA and land on Mars before the end of the decade. NASA intends to land the first astronauts on Mars by about 2040. Meanwhile, SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwen Shotwell says they'll beat NASA in the Mars race by at least a decade. If earlier everyone had looked at such statements with a smirk, now such words are treated with all seriousness. 
SpaceX, under the leadership of its CEO Elon Musk, has achieved what once was considered science fiction, including the reusable use of Falcon 9 rockets. Musk's long-term goal is to establish a human settlement on Mars. Starship, a massive reusable rocket that SpaceX is developing at its facility in Boca Chica, Texas, is intended to be a tool to achieve this goal since its power and capacity will be enough to deliver the first settlers together with supplies to the Red Planet. What needs to happen before Shotwell's prediction becomes reality? When the Super Heavy rocket launches with Starship take place, a lot needs to happen in a short time for Shotwell's promise of people on Mars to come true before the end of the decade. First of all, the rocket must successfully carry out orbital missions. At the same time, both the carrier and the Starship must return and land without incident. According to Musk, these flights will happen during the next two months. Then SpaceX will have to prove it's capable of refueling in orbit. The operation's crucial for the human landing system spacecraft, which will deliver astronauts and cargo to the moon and back as part of the NASA Artemis project. SpaceX currently plans to conduct an unmanned mission to the surface of the moon in 2024 and then land the first people on the moon the next year. If all goes well, SpaceX may be ready to send a spacecraft to Mars. The last launch window to the Red Planet this decade will open in late 2028 and early 2029. In order for Shotwell's promise to be fulfilled, the first human expedition to Mars must depart from Earth at this time. The journey involves great danger, radiation, harsh microgravity conditions that will threaten astronauts during a flight to Mars. It's expected that after landing on the Red Planet, the pioneers will face many harsh conditions bordering on deadly danger. Elon Musk has already warned that part of the crew may not survive the first attempt to conquer the Red Planet. A disaster would reflect very badly on SpaceX. But success will definitely go down in history, to say the least. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.